a man mindfully opens a trapdoor during a tempest. Minutes after the fact, he battles to get away, yet something is maneuvering him back down into the channels. It was 1946, and nobody's seen him since. A youthful couple, Jules and Ben, own a pet store in Oakland. It is 1978. They appreciate working there, and their little girl Rhea can realize about the various creatures. Be that as it may, cash is an issue in a state. A legal counselor approaches Ben, illuminating him he's found a deed to a beachfront property bought during the 1930s under his dad's name. This amazement's Ben since his mom, Linda, spent away months prior, and she never referenced it. The legal counselor shows an article he found from 1946. It expresses his dad and sister vanished in Hobbit's Cove and were assumed dead during a tempest. This would be where that property is. He was informed that his dad and sister kicked the bucket in a fender bender. Why did his mother keep that a secret? Jules mentions that Linda was mentally ill and was institutionalized for most of Ben's life. Not much information is given about the property, so they close up shop and drive up to Oregon for the week. The house is down a long dirt road and with a fallen tree, they must hike the rest of the way. When they arrive, it's covered in foliage and all boarded up. Jules comments that it looks like a dump and probably doesn't have electricity or water. Surprisingly, the place has not seen the light of day in over 30 years. Ben looks at a picture of his mother pregnant with him right before his father's death. Jules opens the back door, and the view is majestic. They own miles of prime beach real estate. On the porch is a trap door. Ben pulls it up, and it leads to the water tank. He climbs down but finds nothing but an old oil lamp. The family is cleaning the house, looking around, and they find some strange things. Most of the windows are nailed shut and boarded up. In a drawer, there are news clippings dating back 80 years about people disappearing, crews on ships never being seen again. There are police reports about his mother being a person of interest in the disappearance of his father and sister. Jules finds Linda's diary, and they begin to read it. It starts a week before the loss of her husband. They had just moved into their dream house on the beach. They have found a spring and have unlimited fresh water. An anonymous person delivered a package of news clippings about strange occurrences near their home, but Linda threw them away. Within two days, her husband disappeared, and a week later, so did her daughter. In between, pages are missing, Rhea hears grunting coming from beneath the house. She looks under her bed and sees the linoleum buckle under the floor. She runs to her parents' bedroom and tells them something is trying to get in. Ben goes outside to look around while Jules searches with a gaslight around the house. Forgot to pack your torch, eh? They bump into each other outside, having found nothing but heard gurgling sounds emanating from the pipes. In the morning, Ben goes to fix the water pump and clean out the tank. Jules warns him not to unleash any monsters down there. Hardy har har. If they only knew, he is able to open the valve and get the water flowing again. He notices caverns branching out through the rock in all directions. Creepy. Ben finds some kind of creature down there, so he shows Jules. She knows a lot about animals, but she's never seen one like this. She thinks it's the larval form of some kind of entity. Vivian suggests they preserve it to show a zoologist. Archie, the dog, keeps barking at the opening to the tank, so Ray calls down to see who is there. She sees some kind of blob pop up and screams. Ben warns her not to play near the trap door and insists she saw a rat or another wild animal. Mario, the local realtor, pops in. She says there have been many interested parties in the past, but Ben's mother said she'd never sell. Mario giggles and tells them their house is legendary here. Most townspeople think it's cursed. Very funny, Mario. She goes on to say that in 1700, there was a massive earthquake that caused a wide geologic fault. Since then, locals think the land is bad, and people who visited disappear, as though the earth swallows them. Mario tells the couple that a buyer has made a generous offer on their house. Ben wants to sell right away, but Jules thinks they should hold out for even more money. Mario says she'll be going for a sunset hike and to think it over and give her a call. When Mario arrives in her car, it's dark, and then the will gets stuck in mud. While she backs out, she exits the vehicle to push it out. Suddenly, she's attacked by the thing that was grunting in the woods and staring at her since she got there. It drags her away as she struggles, shrieking out in terror. What were you saying about a curse, Mario? Late at night, Jules awakens hearing something thudding around under the house. She curiously looks around the house with her flashlight. Outside the window is a creature with teeth and claws looking in. Jules screams. 
Ben says it's probably a raccoon. Yeah, a six foot tall raccoon. Jules says she wants to leave right now. This place gives her the creeps. He agrees and says tomorrow he'll meet the buyer and sell. Apparently, he's creeped out, too. I know I am. In the morning, he continues to mess around in the tank, trying to fix the pump. But now the water is coming out like black tar or at least call a plumber, dude. Upon further investigation into the murky water under the house, he discovers a necklace in the mud. Then a dead raccoon goes floating by. See, Jules, I told you it was just a raccoon. Later, they see the necklace is the very one being worn by his sister in a picture. Something weird is happening in those tunnels of water. Ben takes the station wagon to the gas station to use a payphone to call the police. Oh, this is so 1970s. Mario's car is still there with the door open. He hears flies buzzing, so he goes deeper into the brush to investigate. No, just go. You all like it? And there she is. It's Mario. She's covered in green slime. He has a radio in his car. It's the pre-cell phone days, and he tries to call the police. Meanwhile, Jules notices water all over the floor, so she follows the tracks and sees they lead to a window. She looks in the bedroom for weapons, but the wind shuts and locks the door. Jules smashes through the window and escapes to the outside. She finds Rhea, and they hide inside. Ben gets to them, and the girls tell him something came out of the tank and has been roaming the house. He tells her that he found Mario's body and radioed the sheriff who's on his way. Jules reads the lost diary pages and reveals that his father and sister were killed in the house. His mother witnesses sister being grabbed by some slimy clawed creature. She lied to the police for they wouldn't believe her and left the place, hoping Ben would never come there. Ben hears the sheriff's siren approaching and runs to guide him to the house and give him the heads up about what's going on there. When the officer pulls his weapon and calls for backup, the slime creature attacks him. It kind of looks like a cross between Dinosaur Barney and Piranha. Not a good combination. Swipe left. The sheriff tries to crawl away, but it's no use. He's monster meat. Ben shines his light upon the feasting beast and runs to the house without looking back. He tells Jules some kind of reptile killed the sheriff, and they can't leave because it's still out there. He has a plan to lower it back into the tank, make an explosive out of fertilizer. Then when it's trapped, he'll light the fuse, and the blast should kill them. So, boom, bad Barney and the brethren will blow up. It could work. Ben gets all his supplies and brings them to the tank. He's looking for a shelf or somewhere to secure his makeshift explosive, but he's fighting back the best he can. Jules wants to go help, but there's a pounding on the door. It can't be Archie, he's right there. Maybe it's a land shark. She moves the dresser to block the entrance, but it's too late. The monster busts in while its friend grabs Rhea through the window. Her daughter is getting pulled away by the slimy animal while Jules is simultaneously kicking the one at her door. She sprays it with bug spray and hits it with the lamp, allowing her to get away. Ben has escaped but is gravely injured. He is helpless as a creature drags Rhea into the tank. Jules tells him she's going in, and the bleach and pitchfork weapons will be enough to kill them down in the water. There are many creatures, and she's fighting them off with her farm tools and cleaning supplies. It's Mr. Clean to the rescue. She is able to reach Rhea and has her climb through the tunnels to reach the ladder where she kills as many as she can. They make it out and run to the car. They forget Ben but make sure they have Archie. Upon arrival, Jules realizes she doesn't have the keys, so she must go get them from Ben. But this time she has the cop's gun. She helps Ben and races towards the car. But the monsters have escaped the tank. Meanwhile, Rhea waits in the car. But the monsters find her. She escapes just as her parents arrive. Everyone gets in the car, but the monsters are closing in from all directions. One even tries to hitch a ride in the backseat. They should capture it for their pet store. I bet it'd be a hit. Just a little hard to feed. Jules shoots it and speeds away down the dirt path. She's pretty much halfway home when she stops the car and cries with relief. They beat the monsters, and everyone will be A-OK. -okay. Now, if they can just keep quiet about all this, they can sell the house and let someone else worry about those mutant mud puppies. Or at least send in Barney to teach them how to behave. Thanks for watching Real Recapped. Please hit the subscribe button so you can get notified for more videos like this.